Jeff Lomax, welcome to CIRM. Um, this is, uh, I guess, what we call sort of a maybe a, a mini seminar. Um, typically, we have a lot of um, presentations at CIRM. A lot of them are scientific. This one's a, a tad bit different in a couple of ways. Uh, first, um, substantively, often our speakers are our grantees, providing very sort of uh, nice discussions of some of their, their clinical work and their sort of basic research. But um, today we're doing something a little bit different. It's uh, a presentation, set of presentations tilted towards environmental health research, a topic that I'm uh, particularly partial to. And we have three talks that really represent an intersection between uh, public policy, uh, applied science, and basic research. Um, in addition, today we have a a bit of a diverse audience, which we're pleased about, and thank you for taking time out of your day to, to join us. It's, uh, the audience ranges from researchers um, to policymakers, so I uh, anticipate the discussion will bounce between uh, nuanced biology and more general sort of policy, and we encourage that and look forward to that discussion. I just want to give a little bit of history and background to sort of set up the, the talks today. The sort of general issues of the issue of stem cells and environmental health has been a re recurring topic of interest um, at the institute. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a we convened just a sort of small group of folks to think about um, stem cell science and environmental health, sort of opportunities and challenges. And at the time, our, our current president, Dr. Alan Johnson, had just come on board. And this is actually an issue that was of interest to him. So this was just really a small sit down we did of a little bit of a think piece that is illustrated in the corner up here, and thought, you know, this is you know, a topic that's uh, potentially quite interesting. And it, that conversation evolved into a much more formal workshop where it was called Stem Cells and Predictive Toxicology. There's a workshop report, report available. And that work workshop really focused on sort of two broad areas, both the application of uh, stem cells and environmental health and disease, and also in the area of testing of drugs and toxicity testing of, of pharmaceuticals. And so, so it's kind of an interesting space there because it, it gets at the issues of, you know, how do chemicals or pharmaceuticals or different substances really impact the human body and human health? And it's like I say, it's a, it's a terrific report. I would encourage you to, you know, take a look. And I think a lot of the themes that came up in that workshop we'll revisit today. Again, a bit more in sort of an environmental health context. Um, in addition, we had an autism workshop, and our first speaker, um, Eric Roberts, um, presented to that workshop, and that was sort of the, the catalyst for today's presentation. He talked about some work where they were studying possible relationships between the use of uh, pesticides in agriculture and autism in children. And so one of the things we've asked Eric to do today is sort of pick up, that's where he really left off at the autism workshop. He's going to pick that up again. And um, one of the things that's nice about that study is it's, um, it, it speaks to the issue of policy innovation. It's a study about um, exposures to chemicals that really, if it, if it wasn't for some groundbreaking public policy in California that was led by uh, the co-chair of our governing board. At the time, it was Senator Art Torres of the Senate Toxics Committee who passed legislation really requiring data to be provided about the use of pesticides in California. And that data to this date, I would suggest, is perhaps the, the leading data in the world if you want to do these types of studies. So you know, often you almost think you need to go to Denmark or Sweden or something to study human health, which is for the most part true. But in the case of chemical exposure, pesticides, and human health, you come to California. So thank you, uh, Senator Torres, for that groundbreaking piece of legislation. Um, so, as I said, Eric will sort of lead us off with um, a discussion, I'll come up in one second, um, about that study. And then what, what's important about that study is it leaves us, he, he will allow us to really set up a, a real common problem we have in the area of health and the environment is they've got a study, they're seeing some hints of something that may be going on. There's clue, clues, but there's no clear picture of how might those chemicals actually relate to a particular disease, in this case, autism. It's a bit like finding an individual at a crime scene 
um, but with no particular motive. Because in the case of autism, we don't really understand in a, in a very clear way how the disease really develops, the natural history of the disease. So they found some interesting relationships, but without a clear picture of the history and the, how the disease develops, it's a bit hard then to sort of take that relationship further. So we've then asked some um, speakers um, who, uh, uh, particularly Michael McMaster from UCSF, who's looking at the role of how stem cell biology can help us really understand disease mechanism or disease process. And then finally, um, Tracy Woodruff, who's at UCSF, um, doing some related work, is also looking at some of the, the, the same issues, in addition, um, looking at some of the uh, public policy aspects of toxicity um, evaluation and how that then relates to sort of the broader areas of public health and environmental protection. So um, what we're trying to really bring together is sort of the research, uh, the biology and then linking that to public policy, hence why we have a diverse audience. We're going to touch on a specific disease, which is of interest um, to the audience. And funnily enough, I just thought there were two interesting things that came up this week in email, which I thought made this particularly timely. First of all, um, there is a program in California called the Biomonitoring Program, which they participated actually in our first meeting. And what's interesting about that program is they're actually looking at sort of body burden of chemicals amongst Californians. And they've just received an additional uh, five years of funding from the CDC to really develop that program. So what's of interest there is it may give us a better picture of you know, what sort of um, exposures are going on in California. And um, again, it may relate to some of the issues that have come up in these presentations. And then you may have seen the front page of uh, today's Chronicle, which the EPA is sort of ramping up uh, their programs on uh, chemical oversight. So uh, a lot of things going on in a, in a very big space. I've kind of just given you a 20,000 foot snapshot. And you may not sort of be clear if all these things relate. I'm now counting on three speakers to kind of come up and, you know, paint that picture for me and make it all crystal clear. So welcome. <laughs>